Hello everyone, um, my name is David, and today I'm going to commentate a chess game, and I have actually never played chess, I just started playing chess like three weeks ago, and I gotta say there's a lot of strategy, and a lot of this is basic strategy that I learned from watching a channel called uh, The Chess Website. I'll put a link below because honestly I learned a lot. So anyway, I, I'm white and I play E4, which is a very common move, it gets center, you know, you get control of the center, and then he blocks this at e5 and then I bring my knight attacking the pawn uh, you know gaining more control he then he does something um putting pawn to uh, you know d6 which honestly I think that if you're gonna protect a pawn um, I think that you should do that in the middle of the game like you should like in this goes over obviously all the time and the chess website, and most people that, I don't know if you're ever su subscribed to them, you're, you're going to hear a lot of things that are very similar. You know, you want your pawns to defend pawns, but I don't think it's good to do that really early on in the game, because now you don't really have any other pieces developed except for your pawn. So I developed more of my minor pieces. I put my bishop here, attacking the weakness of the king, the black king. And then he um, brings his pawn to, you know, a6, and I'm thinking, what is he doing? You know, that doesn't do anything. And I realize that he's trying to attack me with his pawns. Which, to me, you should never only solely rely on your pawns. And, you know, if you have minor pieces versus pawns, the minor pieces can just hop right over them, slip right through them, so they're really not a good idea to attack with their pawns so early on. So then I develop my knight, Trying to, you know, hone in on this square. It's, it's a pretty good fort right here. Um, he brings his pawn like I saw. You know, when I saw this, I just laughed because I knew that this this is not a good way of playing. So I decided to, you know, bring my bishop to this little fort. Um, now I am attacking the rook. And he, of course, sees this and he brings it up. Now that's preventing him from castling on the queen side. So now I decide to castle, you know, there's, no, there's really nowhere I can go. I mean, I could go places, but I want to just play it safe while I can. I don't have to worry about any threats. And then he uh, continues his pawn thrust and attacks my bishop. So I decide to bring it back. Um, there's no reason to, you know, it's... it's. And honestly, if you can, I, I, I've done this a lot. I don't know if this is a good idea. But if you bring your pieces and you kind of, like, make the pawns like keep going forward even though they'll pretty much all be in the center it kinda like destroys any kind of defense the king would have later on in the game so right now you know this side is completely messed up I mean even though they're kinda defending each other none of the pieces are developed you know the knight can't go anywhere really the bishop can but you know it's blocking this it's blocking that so it's really not a good idea in my opinion so he continues with his pawns and I just laugh now I would like to take this pawn I mean it's really not defended besides its queen so what I do is I move my pawn this way I can move my uh, knight up safely without having to worry about anything he continues his incredible pawn attack which is to me th to me this is just kinda of funny at this point and then now I'm going to talk about something this is very interesting trap this bishop right here is very key. This bishop is honing down on this weakness right here because there's nothing preventing, nothing defending this pawn right here except for the king. So I, of course, exploit this and put my knight here safely because my bishop's protecting it. Now, he has to do something about this because if not, I'm just going to bring my knight here and then I'm just going to take either a queen or a rook. That's up to him. There's really nothing he can do. So he decides to just attack with his pawns. I mean, seriously, at this point, I'm kind of laughing because all he's doing is basically just pushing up his pawns. Not a good idea. So right now, I, you know, do what I talked about. Now I have this knight is completely safe. And then this is where he kind of messes up, and I kind of feel like, you know, I probably should not upload a video where a person isn't doing that great. But it is kind of cool to see, like, how much, div like, what what it really means for, you know, if you were to bring up pawns, like, how useless they are if you're only attacking their pawns and how important it is to have developed pieces. So then he kind of, he brings his bishop here. I guess he didn't really see this, the queen getting attacked. And he thought maybe once I attack his rook, he can get his horse back. But then, of course, I just take the queen. 
and then he takes his, with his king now preventing him from castling either side now his king's completely defenseless he has no development this bishop can't do anything this doesn't do and basically he just has his pawns which i can just slip right through i decided to bring my bishop up here to attack the rook and not only am i attacking the rook i'm actually like right in the center you know i have a very good center control with this bishop here he sees this but here's the funny thing about these bishops they can just slip through anything uh, and a lot of people they, they miss it because you know they see a bishop you know they're not really paying attention to how much of a reach a bishop actually has and so he of course you know he actually sent me a little chat thing he's saying that he messed up completely and he felt like an idiot but you know you got to exploit it so i take the rook and then now he decides to attack my bishop with his knight and then I decide to put him in check so I can kind of put my bishop in a nice little fort right here. So, you know, I can't really be attacked, you know, very well. You know, he would have to move his other minor pieces and just... It, I mean, really, right now I'm kind of in a good spot. So he decides to move his king, putting more pressure on my bishop. So I decide to get it out of there. There's no reason to stay there. And then he decides to move more of his pawns. And... Right now, I could bring my knight back to e2, you know, and try and progress it, you know, to here and then go to here and then try and like move it up. But I decided that, you know, that would take too much time. And I think I'd rather have this minor piece defend my bishop. So that's what I do. And even though it's not really a good idea to have a knight there, I don't want to just have my knight, you know, hop around the board until it gets to the right place. It's too many moves. So he continues his pawn thrust. And he moves here to protect this because there's really nothing. There was nothing protecting this really, which is a good idea. And also, it creates a nice little spot right here. Okay, so I decide to move my pawn up here to kind of prevent this from moving forward, as well as kind of honing down on this little fort right here. So he decides to move his bishop to attack my uh, horse. Now I do have my queen defending it, but the thing is, I this is where you want your pawns to defend your minor pieces, and have pawns defend pawns and minor pieces and minor pieces attack. So even though I don't have to really worry about this bishop coming in, I kind of want to not have my queen defending it. And what I really want to do with my queen at this point, I'm thinking, is I want to bring it and help my bishop because right now this this diagonal is really kind of honed in so if I can bring my queen somewhere over here he's really weak right these spots this spot right here is a huge weakness for him and if I but this pawn right here I kind of want to get rid of this pawn and then I want to kind of move up but right now he has a bishop attacking it and then he has a horse attacking it. so right now that's what I'm thinking so I decided to move my pawn up so this way I can defend my knight with my pawn instead of my queen so I can get my queen in the game he brings his knight over here, and uh, I forgot to mention this, but this spot right here is completely undefended. There's I mean, there's nothing I can do. If he brings his knight here, there's really no way I can kill him if he does that. There's no spot I can really go, and I don't want to waste so many turns just trying to attack it. It's not worth it. So right now, what I'm trying to do is I actually push up my pawn, hoping that he would either take with his knight or take with his pawns so preventing him from getting that spot because i would sacrifice a pawn so i don't have to worry about him having a good control of the center so he kind of moves his rook up here and right now i kind of wonder why i mean there's no reason to attack this but i mean i suppose you can you know right now if he did attack i would just take it back with my horse i have my knight so i decided to just move up the board with my pawn you know this way I'm attacking the knight and I'm also doing a huge thing I, I, I see here. This spot right here is a huge weakness because if I were to move a queen right here or any kind of piece, it, it's being completely protected by this pawn. This pawn really can't be killed. Uh, okay, so anyway, he moves back to that spot like I said. And I bring my queen here to kind of like, I want, it, I want it to come right, I want to eventually kind of bring my queen over here so I can hone down this spot. But I need to do something about this pawn. I definitely need to do something about this bishop. And luckily he kind of did it for me. He took my bishop and right now I decide to take with my pawn right back. Then he takes my bishop. You know, I did leave it undefended there. But that's fine because actually I'm going to make that rook move back up one spot 
And now this is creating a huge trap right now. There's some things I learned that if you were to actually, if I were to get some like a rook or a queen right here, he would have to forcibly move his queen or his uh, king so I can go ahead and take it. So I, I can kind of see that weakness and that's what I'm trying to figure out. How can I get my queen to right here? So I decide I need to get rid of this pawn and I don't want to attack it with my queen because he still has his horse there. So I kind of want to get rid of it. Now either he takes it or I take it. Either way, I'm going to get that spot back. He decides to take, and then I decide to go on with my plan. Now, if he, he needs to do something about this bishop. If he doesn't move this bishop, I'm just going to come in here, take it, and then I'm going to take his rook. So he does see that, and he moves his bishop back. So uh, at this point, right now, I am free to take this, and not only am I taking this, if I take this, I'm going to have this huge diagonal available, and I'm going to have this spot that I was talking about that's completely defended. So that's what I do. And I'm not sure if he saw this, but right now he's trying to prevent things. So he brings his knight here. And even though I could continue with my attack, I don't really want to worry about him continually attacking. Or I want to I kind of get rid of this horse and make sure it's kind of useless. So what I do is I move it right here. And what I was hoping he would do is kind of either go right here so he kind of blocks my pawn. And it is a good move. You're blocking my pawn and attacking my rook. But it's also kind of bringing your horse out of the game. Like there's really no place your horse can go now. Or your knight, sorry, I call it a horse. It's a horse. It's a, it's a freaking horse. So anyway, I, I put my rook here, kind of preventing him from going anywhere. And now this, I mean, even though I didn't kill the knight, it's pretty much useless. So you can pretty much consider it, like, gone. So then he he does take a pawn that was undefended. But now this horse really is in a bad spot. It doesn't. It's not doing anything. So I continue with my plan. I bring up my queen. And from here, it kind of is just me getting him into checkmate. So he moves his king. And now this is what the key thing I've learned is using other pieces to team up. Right now, my bishop is protecting my queen, so he can't take. Okay, he moves back. And then I come down here. Again, my pawn is protecting me, so I can attack the king. He can't do anything. And now I'm trying to chase him into this corner because I kind of want to get his king out of the center because the center is not a good idea. I don't want him to be in the center. So then I bring up right here, I put him in check, protect, my queen is protected, then he moves his king. And then I decide to take the bishop, and then my next move is hopefully to kill the knight if he's not going to do anything about it. There's really no place the knight can go. He could have brought the knight here, because then it would be protected by the rook. But then I would just take it with my bishop, so there's really no place it can go. So he decides to move his knight and attack my rook, which is a good idea. So I decide to get my rook out of there and start helping out my queen have even more attackers on the king's side. Then he moves his pawn. I guess he was trying to get to the... He figured you know, maybe he can uh, you know, rank up his dudes. So I decide to take the knight. And then he continues his, his pawns, thrusting up the board. And I could just continue with my attack and bring my rook here and continue doing... But I, I kind of don't want him to... Do you, you, I don't have to worry about that. So I just bring my bishop, you know, if he were to try and do that. Now he continues, which surprised me because even though, you know, I'd be trading a bishop for a knight, I have more. I have two rooks and a queen, so I don't mind trading. I mean, honestly, what he's doing right now, like he, when he trades all this, if he, now, not only is he down in material even more, but he left his king completely undefended. So I, of course, exploit that. He starts running on, and from here, and, oh yeah, before I get into that, now I'm attacking this thing, and I would gladly trade off rooks at this point, because then all he'll have is a king. He decides to leave it undefended. I'm not sure what he was thinking. I think he wanted to attack my pawn. So I take his pawn. He takes my pawn. But then now that his rook is completely out of the game, his rook is nowhere near his king to protect him, so I just exploit that. I bring my king or my queen protected. Now I'm just basically chasing him around and he's basically just going to keep running away. And then the only th I force him to sacrifice his rook. Now it's pretty much game over at this point. And it was all because I developed my minor pieces and did small things. And I got to say, it really does help. And anyway, thank you. My name is David and hopefully you guys enjoyed this commentary. And now it's checkmate. All right, thank you. Bye-bye.